Okay, conception, introduction, and use in the. Uh, this is quite interesting because uh, I found myself in the position of uh, uh, falling desperate because of PHP, um, uh, many other things, PHP unit uh, being upgraded, uh, and uh, a lot of things falling down. And the topics of this uh, slides will talk about uh, this talk with uh, will be covering uh, what is the current state for ye uh, and testing uh, suites and uh, stuff like that uh, the overview on tests what is testing uh, if you never done that um, an overview on conception the basics and the terminology um, a little bit uh, um, uh, um, a little bit of uh, what uh, is the situation on ye2 thank uh, thank god uh, we had the opportunity to see uh, ye2 being released just this last sunday so i said that's very good because i cannot i can say things how they're going to be as there is a code freeze now um, i'm going to do a, a small example on uh, writing an acceptance test with uh, using php browser um, see a little what is the difference between acceptance and functional tests uh, cover the situation in e1 as um, since I mean, it might not be the, the case for you of using uh, E2, and you actually can have problems with E1 regarding your tests, and you want to cover uh, them with this new technology, which is a conception. Well, it's not particularly new, but to me it is. Um, and then we will see a couple of other cool stuff, and if possible, some live examples. So current situation, that's quite an interesting situation because um, it's a situation regarding tests uh, quite difficult. Uh, there, there are loads of different uh, um, suites available and most of the times what I felt uh, is that at least in PHP world um, it's a little bit fiddly situation. Uh, you have a, a lot to do regarding the configuration. Um, you have a lot of problems regarding the portability across environments. That is, uh, if you're working in a team, you have, you're working on some tests and you want that those tests to be able to be run uh, by different developers uh, in your team. And this sometimes felt uh, it's not exactly easy. So, unless the framework ships a testing, proper testing environment, that means uh, the ability for the frameworks to expose to the testing environment all the um, uh, database connection, all the magic function that provides, all the auto-loading function, etc, etc. Um, is it really another tool? Well, it's not. It's not. It is designed with accessibility and modularity in mind, which means uh, um, it tries to create a uniformity across different uh, test suites and uh, when I'm talking about test suites, I'm talking about uh, mostly PHP units and anything else that can be uh, done on top of it uh, in, from the stack perspective. Uh, and also works on top, so that means that works on top of different technologies. We, we've seen PHP unit, as I said, PHP browser, Selenium, and there are many others that have been used, uh, um, ZombieJS uh, and many others, really. There are loads. You can use many different frameworks that use the different solution depending on where what was most comfort, uh, they were most comfortable with. Uh, but most of all, should you bother writing tests? Well, the, the answer is as simple as that. So that is, yes, you should. And in case it wasn't particularly clear, yes, you really should write tests. The, re the, 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 the I am... Um, the idea for many people and what I've read in the first, very first years I started reading and writing tests was that you should have 100% of code coverage of your test. Well, that's in practice, that's a very admirable aim, but not sometimes in, in practice, uh, not particularly achievable. Uh, but what you should start from is a QA strategy, which comes from uh, proper planning. So if you are in a good team and you want to do things properly and you don't want to spend the weekends fixing bugs, 
unless you're a maniac, etc., etc. Uh, I think it's the time for you to start writing tests. Um, we are talking about the quality of code, uh, we are talking about uh, regression testing and all the stuff that normally bothers most people uh, who actually care about what they write uh, software-wise. What kind of tests uh, we, do we have? We have a uh, higher level, which is acceptance tests. These are, this is uh, what um, Codeception defines. Um, there are slightly different uh, nomenclature and way of saying things, but this can be uh, taken as uh, a good uh, um, definition of uh, the different kind of tests. We have uh, acceptance tests. Um, the, these are highest level tests. There is no knowledge of what's uh, the technology being used uh, in the application. Um, so in, uh, in Codeception there is uh, this so-called uh, web guy, which is, well, it's a model, you can imagine that. Um, is a non-technical person, so you can imagine a non-technical person, like could be a project manager or someone, or something like that, who comes to the application and wants to see that uh, the, 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 the features uh, he asked to be implemented uh, have actually been implemented. So he opens the browser, navigates to the page, opens the page, checks that the things should be there as expected. Um, and uses, uh, by default, he uses a PHP browser. Um, but um, um, if you want, uh, there are many other modules that have been, uh, they are, are available currently, that have been written as well. And most of them, uh, the one that I like to, uh, uh, site um, uh, Zombie.js and Selenium <coughs> WebDriver and regarding Selenium WebDriver I think is worth having a look if you've never looked into it. Um, second level, we are in the middle level here, functional tests. These are actually tests uh, um, from the point of view of uh, a test, uh, a test uh, the so-called test guy in uh, conception um, way of saying. So the test guy knows how the application works from the server perspective. So you can imagine that these are tests that are server, um, they are browserless. So we actually, when we write the test, we are writing direct queries, raw queries somehow to the server and we read the, 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 the response and we analyze it and decide whether it is okay or not. In other ways, we can say that um, if, of course, you can imagine that if we have headers, cookies, sessions um, to be present and readable, well, that's not the situation we need um, functional, uh, functional tests for. In that case, we might need acceptance, uh, acceptance tests instead. Um, uh, functional test uh, needs, uh, um, they do need uh, uh, bridging, some sort of bridging between uh, uh, codeception and the framework. Uh, and as we will see, uh, E2 comes already with uh, its own bridging and E1 has got its own module for doing the bridging. It's a little bit more complex situation because it's been had to be retrofitted. They're going to be talking about that as well. And the last part uh, is the most uh, interesting one, uh, well, the one that uh, I think more, more people have dealt with are uh, unit tests. Uh, these are the lowest level you can get. Uh, these are meant to be isolated, single isolated tests, where you take a, like a method of uh, an object and you test whether the, it's working fine and all the corner case scenarios. So the code guy, which is actually the model we will be using, to test these tests, um, to run these tests from, uh, knows the internal details of the application, the testing um, database, so we will be testing the database operations, uh, that whether everything is working fine within the deep core of your application. In codeception packages PHP unit and provides further abstraction over it to simplify stuff that with PHP unit alone is uh, mostly um, a pain to do, uh, which is like uh, mocks, uh, stubs, uh, in order to um, mocking, in order to mock like library, external libraries, which as again, as I said, this is a situation where you want to be 
um, are, um, testing a very isolated uh, element of your application. So everything that goes around it uh, has to be mocked uh, in a way or the other. Um, I can give you an, a practical example. If you're working, if you wrote uh, um, a library that deals with uh, Amazon, uh, yet then you might need some unit tests uh, that test your library, but do not test the Amazon library, that actually mocks the Amazon library, so you can have the most clean, uh, simplest situation where things can say, well, from this input I get this output, and in this particular case uh, I get this particular exception. So let's see what goes into uh, E2, what we've seen, uh, what I've seen uh, happening in uh, E2 uh, the beta. Um, uh, it's, well, if you've been using as I did uh, the app base, uh, uh, you need to read the readme. That's something I, <laughs> I found with my experiences <coughs> because I thought, well, just install Codeception, it will work. Um, it's actually not Codeception, it's actually, uh, well, um, yes, thank you. Composer should be uh, the first line, but don't worry, I'll be yeah. correcting that. Composer, so you will install a conception by a composer, and, um, and it's the specific version, it will be 1.8. Otherwise, if you install it manually, you will get the, uh, the 2.0 beta, which is not exactly working with uh, E2 at the moment. So um, uh, I forewarn you in case you ever try to do that. Uh, it should be straightforward anyway. So once you have done that, once you have installed the um, Viacomposer Codeception, you will install it in uh, uh, Vendor, the, the, it's in the directory is Vendor Bin uh, Codecept. Um, you need to run the build script. This build script needs to be run every time every time a um, um, configuration change happens. Uh, and it will create, uh, in this case, specific case of E, the first thing it will do, the only thing you will do, it will create uh, your guys <laughs> that will take care of running the test. We have uh, the test guy, the, uh, the web guy, and the code guy for the different kind of uh, test we'll be uh, using some functional acceptance and unity one. Well, in whichever order you want to read it. Um, so once you have done that, you have everything, and now you need to configure the entry URLs for the test. So there are two things you need to configure. You have the test entry URL, which is in under the directory tests underscore bootstrap dot php. Uh, really, really straightforward. Um, we have the URL for the acceptance <laughs> tests. Uh, in my case, uh, in the mm, out of the box case, uh, what's being provided by E2 is a PHP browser, and if you want, uh, there is a guide for using a web driver on Codeception website that covers uh, all the steps to install a web driver and use it. Um, and they already have uh, uh, the commented out um, in the YAML file the web driver URL for when running the, the acceptance tests. So once you have everything in place, you have that installed, you have that configured, uh, and then you just need to generate the test files, which is done automatically you know, through Codeception. So you can see the first line is <coughs> Concept uh, uh, Generate Set. Set is a particular kind of test, it's the simplest that you can have, and we'll see why, what it means, and we'll see what other alternative there is. Um, the, the, the type of suite we, you want to, to create a test for, and the name of the test. And automatically, as, as you will see, we'll receive a, a, an answer saying, the test was created in homepage sept.php. And it will, you will find it in test suite name, homepage sept, and the name of the, name of the file. And then once you have that, well, you, you, you will edit, implement the tests you want, and run the tests. Uh, run the test is done via run. There are other options uh, easily uh, discoverable via the conception. Concept uh, <clears throat> executable. Um, you have run, you have run with the debug option, you have run via steps, so you can see each single step what I've done. You can run a specific group and you will see all this stuff, but it, it's very straightforward. I found it uh, when I first approached uh, Conception, particularly, uh, particularly fine and, and easy to understand. And we will see how easy it is. Uh, 
Um, she, he too, I want to add, uh, um, is uh, um, released, has been released with uh, some already working tests, both for each of these three categories. So when you download the base application, you will see that already the, the test uh, available, uh, implemented. You just need to install, as I showed here, uh, Conception and configure it, and you have everything ready to go. And when you run Concept Run, you will have those 13 tests and 63 assertions available and uh, uh, without any failure, hopefully. Um, there are other stuff that Yee 2 does. Uh, it actually implements a little bit more stuff, so I encourage you, if you are willing to do so, uh, to read through the code that is automatically generated and provided by E as well, because it's really interesting and it shows you all the capabilities and uh, uh, things that can be done with uh, Codeception. So, acceptance tests, uh, let's see a particular uh, specific example. Acceptance tests using PHP browser. Uh, I haven't gone through uh, running uh, acceptance tests with Selenium. It would have taken me way too long with the time I had at hand. But uh, it's quite interesting nonetheless because it, it is working out of the box. Uh, so you, you really can just install E2 or Conception as well and just run it through it and it's working. Um, PHP browser, as you, if you don't know, it is powered by um, I don't even remember the name of, uh, uh, there is a particular engine, it's, it's an engine, uh, a PHP engine, a browser engine that is uh, a powering uh, uh, web scraper. Uh, so you can imagine that is very low level kind of requests uh, and reads uh, being done. Anyway, um, so I'm not going to do very complex stuff. I'm not going to do cross browser testing, which m some people might not need if you're writing a, a REST interface it's something that you don't need, of course. Uh, but if you are doing something more high level, I suggest you to look into WebDriver. I think it's really worth. Um, so let's see uh, acceptance tests. No, normally in the BDD uh, lingo, we have a, we can create a scenario. So we can say, okay, we want to do this project. We create the project. We 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 say we do a project product. Uh, product breakdown into features and each feature is uh, asserted with this kind of le um, lexicon which is uh, uh, it for the, in this particular instance as an account holder I want to be able to log in and so I can check my dashboard that's amazing and uh, let's see what it means uh, to the uh, whoever writes the tests so uh, we've got a very simple situation it means that what I need to do is, uh, you can imagine that I'm opening the website. I need to click on uh, the login button or uh, link, and I need to fill in the form for the login, click the submit button, and then fill myself and find myself into the right page, which I hope it is the dashboard. So what is gonna happen is that uh, we're gonna write our test, or I'll open the PHP uh, code, and then I instantiate my web guy. Uh, the web guy is, uh, as we said, uh, the highest uh, of, um, guy that is going to be uh, be used for the acceptance tests. Um, so I want to log in to check the dashboard. This is a simple uh, statement that we are doing for recording and uh, actually organizing our code in the proper way. Um, then I am asserting that I am on uh, the right page. I'm actually on the root of the website, which every by default uh, all the tests will start from, and then from the, uh, from here, but we'll see if is it really the root, and we are seeing the right home page. It's not just an error, and we are able. We should be able to see the title of the application. In this particular case, it would be E2 test, which is the name I gave to my application. Well, also, we'll be, I'll be able to see a link for the login, which he will have also be pointing to site slash login. Pretty much easy, as you can see. Again, we're going to do what? We're going to click on login. Simple as that. And we're going to see now in the new page, we're going to end into, where we're going to see that there is a, in, in, a, in a tag, H1 tag, 
we're going to see that there is a, a login within it. That's, that's great. Then after that, there will be a form. I'm going to fill in with a method fill field. Um, we're going to fill the, the username and password of the form. I'm going to omit that for clarity. And then we're going to click the login button. And then again, in the new page, we're going to see the link logout admin, clearly, and admin dashboard as a title of um, the, the new page. So, Again, I want to stress how easy it is to read this kind of code. And really, even an, exp an experienced person can really go through it and understand whether it's something right or wrong to do. And also, as I had many conversations with uh, um, a quality assurance uh, uh, lead guy, a friend of mine, he said uh, that the biggest problem for testers is that they don't know much the, the, the programming language that goes behind the running tests. This actually comes in aid uh, for these kind of problems and helps uh, testers, uh, people who have, don't have particular knowledge in writing tests or even you know, checking that the test is working right to actually see through it and actually read through it. And I found this uh, particularly clever on their point of view, the way they decided to, to structure it. So, and then we, we have a thing because uh, if You've seen now the, how the acceptance tests are written, and you see how the functional tests that you will see yourself, the, how the functional tests will, uh, will be written. They're very similar, they're almost the same. So, you might ask yourself what's the difference between acceptance and functional tests? Well, both of them are very similar to each other. There are exceptions, of course, because depending on the, whether you use the PHP browser rather than Selenium, you have different functions available. But they are very, very similar in the way they're expressed and they've written. Um, but the acceptance tests are the highest abstraction uh, you can have over your application. And that means that you can use them for doing cross-browser testing, which you cannot do, of course, uh, uh, with the lack of a browser, as it is in the case of all the functional tests using PHP browser. Um, so functional tests are, in, on the other hand, a very simple tool write, implement, and even in time it, uh, they take to run uh, very short. So a uh, Selenium test would take an amount of time because it needs to load the, if you're working in a, a master-slave situation, it will take time to load the, the virtual machine and load the browser, reset everything, um, run the test, the actual test. So everything you are, can understand that would take a little bit. Instead with PHP browser, if you're doing functional tests, it's really, really snappy uh, and quicky, quicky really, really quicker. Um, so it's very good using functional tests for doing API and REST uh, uh, test uh, interfacing, interfaces tests. Um, the, um, the engine uh, used is actually called the GUT uh, engine, um, used by PHP browser. And obviously it does not know anything about the JavaScript. It does not know how to JS. Um, so it talks directly to the server, analyzes, analyzes the response, as I said before. So let's step back a little bit and let's see how the situation is because E2 is not out uh, as stable. We still have the situation when most of us, I think, are still running on the E1, which is the most stable framework we can have in E. Um, but the situation for testing is a little bit uh, like that. So what was coming with E1 was a functional test using Selenium RC, which is now uh, of, um, replaced entirely by WebDriver, which provides uh, a way more interesting interface uh, and better abstraction uh, for doing t um, um, acceptance tests. And then you have a unit test of using PHP unit, and once it was done via peer. So what it means that uh, since uh, last December, when uh, uh, PHP unit uh, um, came out with uh, version 3.6, 3.7, and now we are 4.0.14, I think, or 17, or something like that. And the whole composer thing that is happening, um, things a little bit started to break down into pieces. And we ended up in a situation of work where things won't work anymore. So uh, that means that's what the reason why was because uh, e, auto, e autoloaders weren't working anymore with the PHP unit uh, autoloaders. 
uh, that was a very unfortunate uh, combination of things. So there is a, there has been, uh, and also you cannot even take advance, a full advantage of the new versions of Selenium. So that means it's a lot of time has passed uh, since uh, the the way uh, E1 was written uh, and uh, what was meant to be doing. So instead, with codeception, instead we can have functional tests working out of the box, which is fantastic in my opinion. Uh, and the PHP unit uh, uh, does not want to kill himself because uh, it's packaged within the conception, is provided and is working out of the box again. And if you want, you can expand it, go using other, other, uh, other frameworks uh, and be happy and joyful for the rest of your life. Um, now, um, let's see, just uh, I want to go through it because I found uh, some problems based on what's written in the guides and what's not, mostly not written in the guides. Uh, how, what, mean, what it means by running uh, and the actual implementing. If you ever find yourself in the situation, if you ever find yourself in the situation where you want to use, you have unit tests written, functional tests written, and you want to go back and make them work because they broke down because someone updated the PHP unit on the server, then you need to go through these steps. And I'm just making these notes because um, I found myself in some, some, some troubles at uh, certain points. So everything goes from, uh, starts from the quick start guide of Codeception with a few exceptions. Um, we, we're going to install Codeception in the same directory where it be, will be found on the most, more or less, without protected here in E2. So we're gonna um, download uh, Codeception and uh, make it executable uh, so we can run it directly. Once you have it, uh, we're going to initialize, initialize the directory structure, which is we're going in, well, every, all the different next comments uh, are be called from within uh, the protected tier. Uh, we're going to run the concept uh, and we're going to run the bootstrap command. The bootstrap command is what actually creates all the different files uh, and directories that are needed. It will override, uh, it won't override, but it will add more stuff to the tests directory which is already present uh, in E1. So it won't touch anything, but if you're starting with uh, blank tests, you need to get rid of them. Uh, otherwise, we'll get confused. Oh, you need to refactor them uh, if you already have some stuff, the old stuff you need to port over to the uh, conception. I'm going to go into that. Um, for everything to work as we are not in E2, you need, the only thing you really need to do is the conception br bridge. Uh, E1 conception bridge is available. It's all written in the guides, so you will find information, but it's just spread uh, across different pages. So I'm putting everything together. U bridge, is from, it's just a, um, a bridge, a module for conception, for um, providing the hooks uh, and the, to avoiding the autoloader conflicts we had before. Um, and then uh, what you need to do is just uh, add to the bootstrap file of uh, <coughs> conception the, where the ET uh, PHP file is available. Um, and then last thing you need to do, um, sorry, I'm the by EML, uh, the, you need to configure, obviously, add the E1 to the configuration file, add the app, app path and the URL where the test will be hitting. This is very straightforward, but uh, if you forget to add the configuration, uh, uh, Conception will tell you that something is wrong. Um, last steps is just uh, to go. just uh, run the build script. As again, I said before, build script, every time you touch a YAM file, you have to run it again. No worries about that. It won't break anything. It will just regenerate these internal files uh, for, um, uh, for your test uh, to find the right files in the right places. And then uh, generate. We always have uh, this amazing generation, uh, code generation uh, uh, common. Uh, your, your, your tests, uh, in this case, I'm, I'm creating a functional, um, 
a test called the home page in the functional suite uh, as a set uh, test. Um, then I got implemented and then run it. Uh, and like in this case, as you can see, I'm running specifically only the functional tests. So it's really, really a piece of cake. Um, there are. This is all extracted from with a few ad adjustments uh, extracted from the documentation. What's not written in the documentation and I actually struggle the most uh, is about unit tests because uh, here the e developers who have worked on uh, on this are ragazzo and uh, yeah, I think mostly mostly ragazzo and the conception guy uh, which is called I don't even remember do you remember the name uh, anyway. Um, so he's the lead developer of Conception and uh, IE developer worked on, the, on it and there is a post on the forum who talks about it, it's very open if you want, if you need the information just post on the forum, the guy is very, uh, Rogaz is very very uh, keen to answer, um, but there is no like well formed documentation. So what it means that <laughs> the Conception unit test, the uh, unit tests uh, on, on steroids that Codeception provides are not available in E1. At least I, won't, I haven't been able to run them. Um, instead, uh, they are just available the PHP unit uh, ones, which are fine if you've already written PHP unit files in PHP in uh, E. Uh, you just need uh, to backport them. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so you generate uh, using generate PHP unit as a unit in the suite unit and uh, the name of uh, the um, of the test you want to do and when you when the test is created uh, the the class uh, it will have, the, your test will extend from needs to be changed back to the ones you will be using you had used previously uh, with uh, the original uh, PHP unit uh, E1 tests in this case, a C test case for the basic one with you, when you don't need a database connection, or otherwise a CDB test case. Um, and if you're using a CDB test case in case you want to test uh, um, active records connection to the database and all this kind of stuff, and if you used uh, CDB tests uh, in E1 before, you will know that you can use fixtures which is uh, preload some certain kind of data in the database before the test, have a clean set, and then check against this data and verify that what you've written and read is correct. Um, if you are doing that, uh, you know that in order for the fixture to work, you need the, uh, the generate function uh, uh, command that will uh, uh, create you an empty setup uh, and tear down method which you either have to comment out <coughs> or within it uh, implement it by calling uh, the parent uh, uh, parent classes uh, method. That's the only thing you need to be aware because uh, I became a little bit mad when I wanted to use the, the, the fixture. But it's, it works out of, once you have everything into place, it just works, which is, in my opinion, very cool. Other cool stuff we have in Codeception, uh, which is worth looking into, um, there is an interactive console, so you really can just fire up the console and show people if you are trying to sell it to your bosses or whoever, uh, or friends, uh, the interactive console actually makes you instantiate the guy you want and uh, interact with uh, the suite, uh, like. Uh, uh, C, B, and on a page uh, using PHP browser, whatever um, testing suite you want to use, uh, testing framework you want to use be below it. You have grouping and dependencies, which normally um, they are well defined, depend special dependencies in PHP unit, but not always available on all, across all the different testing uh, frameworks. And in a way, um, Conception tries to uniform that, so provide common interface for grouping and uh, deciding, uh, having um, dependencies, dependencies across, uh, between, uh, between tests. Then we have uh, chest classes, which, uh, so the, um, the chapt, which I've used in, before for here, yeah. uh, nope. Mm. Was it? 
So in this case, you can see is that I'm trying to generate a chat interface. The chat interface is nothing but this kind of structure, which is a plain file with instruction, a plain PHP file with instruction written one after the other. If you want to have, if you have a lot to uh, test, uh, obviously grouping things together can be a little bit difficult, and then they make the, something that was, um, that is normally done in PHP unit, which is the organization in classes. So the chest, um, the chest classes are actually uh, the ability to create uh, as uh, classes, as objects, the tests. So you can organize them, split them in different files, and have everything. Um, the other two step, the page objects and step objects. The page objects have been. Uh, you will see if you download uh, E2, you start playing around with E2 with the base base application, base app, you will see that they implemented the page objects. So it's a way, and both, even the step objects are a way to reuse in a um, common way the code that you've written, for instance, for doing a login on a form, or uh, finding yourself opening a page. Instead of writing three comments, you organize them in a, in a function, and you just, you just use that. So it's, and you will see the implementation, uh, it's worth looking at the implementation in Git too. Uh, because uh, it's way more uh, practical than just reading a, a document page and me telling you that. Um, step, a, step objects are the same thing, are, are like steps, but like grouped a ste bunch of steps. Um, and then the, the last part, in my opinion, very interesting. Uh, um, you have the ability to test uh, with different uh, environment configurations, which is something that was normally disregarded by the testing community, in my opinion, especially regarding PHP unit. So you shouldn't really test among, um, against uh, static values, uh, configuration files, etc. In this case, they provide you the ability to set an environment and uh, run the test within this environment as it was uh, with certain variables. The practical example that comes into my mind is the debug um, uh, con constant uh, uh, variable, uh, it's not variable, but it's constant. Um, the, and many others that you can have throughout your application that change can change across different environments as you deploy it or you distribute it um, in different, uh, different situations. Um, obviously, all this information, all these, uh, um, it's very nice documentation they've written, so it's all available. Mm -hmm. In, uh, on the website, uh, so feel free to browse through, and the guys are very keen in listening to developers uh, who wants to contribute or want to suggest uh, new stuff. So I wanted to give some live examples uh, of what can be done with it. I would prefer first to run through Q&A, question and answer, if you have any questions, because the time has been a little short. So, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yep. Between the Mac and the Linux, there's a huge Now the, the uh, okay so the acceptance uses uh, um, the web guy the, the the functional uses the test guy the unit uses the code guy <coughs> it's just naming yeah, the, the yes which is a f an, an um, uh? no this is not functional it can be. It can be used as functional because uh, in this case I'm using via a PHP browser. So it doesn't really change much in this particular case. Uh, using PHP browser and using these statements, it's, you can really take the file and make, move it into the functional test and it will work. So, but in case you have a higher level uh, testing situation, Things are obviously changing and are slightly different because of that. Um, so yeah, okay.
Wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, to, 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 uh, well, uh, see, if I, I can run through, if you want, I can run through um, the live code. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, there is a um, go and test stuff. To, don't, just don't think about that. If you need to sell it, there are plenty of do- documentation arguments on the internet about uh, whether a test is worth or not. Yes, it is. <laughs> don't, it was a rhetorical. And um, uh, if you are in doubt, uh, <coughs> the generated code uh, is amazing. It's really good. The, test, uh, the guys are available directly in, within the testing folder. There are pages already implemented. There is loads of stuff you can read of it. Uh, the documentation is very well written. It probably lacks some stuff. It's very uh, high level somehow, sometimes. Uh, but you can uh, um, you can always reach the developers. Uh, I found it very easy to do, and as well the integration to E2. Uh, E2 provides some uh, they generate the documentation every four hours. I found out. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you you can really find find everything. Uh, you see one example. Yep, I got everything. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, let me just check the size of the font. That's right. Do you, everybody does see it clearly. That's way to do it. Better? Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, what I need to do? Okay, this is a virtual machine running in my machine, which I use as a development. That's Pretty much. Like Joke section as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, all meant to be like that. <laughs> to test. Okay, so here is the basic structure you will find. Uh, in uh, when you install the basic app for E2, uh, 200 beta. And then you have, as you can see, tests. So when you go into the tests, uh, you will see, this is the, the structure. So you have a bootstrap, which is the stuff you will need to add if you want to uh, initialize variables, um, initialize stuff, generic. Not very much to be said. As you can see, um, you probably see this kind of uh, um, uh, syntax with, with the underscore is internal, private, somehow stuff. Um, where the where the this stuff you need is acceptance, functional, and unit with their with their uh, YAML files with the configuration and everything. As you can see here, um, for instance, the acceptance uh, suite YAML is. Uh, you have uh, the class name, the modules being loaded, in this case a web helper and PHP browser, and then you have the configuration where I'm telling where to PHP browser where to go <coughs> to see uh, my, my application. So, and otherwise, uh, as you can see, it's already commented out, but it's available, web driver, the URL, the browser, and restart, etc., etc. So quite, quite straightforward. Uh, no, please note uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, a run build command after adding removing modules. This is very important, don't forget about that. Uh, but it's the only thing you need to do. Um, when you're doing a vendor bin concept run, and then here we will run all our tests. Shall we run them all? Okay. Yes. See, so these are just the tests that are shipped with the uh, <coughs> I didn't get into, I actually created one, but it doesn't really contain much. Um, Would you mind doing by uh, piping uh, tree to uh, 
lights just so I can. So, okay, so current page, uh, we have data, which is, contains the normal uh, dump um, SQL, which is used by E tests. Um, we have the helpers, which are very simple helpers are available for generic function implemented. Mm -hmm. um, log is just log, so you can imagine what it contains. Uh, but it's very useful in case you have uh, problems with your test, we got all the dump in there. Um, and the logs uh, directory is actually used when if you want to create a, the um, code coverage for your tests. Uh, normally, the code coverage goes automatically. Yes, automatically goes into that. The configuration for code coverage is separate. It goes into the main YAML file, uh, but yeah, it's out of yeah, the box. I Working with, uh, not, not going for one hundred percent code coverage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then you have pages. Uh, which is the implementation page objects. Um, I will show you, it's really interesting the way they did it. Uh, you have the acceptance tests, um, in this case a lot of them. Uh, what you need to, to see here is that we have the, the web, web guy, the guys, uh, um, even here, the, the function. Of the, of the ah, directly in the phrase. Yes, they are there. They contain all the methods that you will be able to use for those guys, plus uh, the parents, the generic ones. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, uh, those are, are just annotation, the top class uh, uh, defines only annotation, annotation why the guys uh, implement the actual functions <coughs> for accessing a page, reading a page, uh, seeing a link, or whatever it is. Uh, you can write as well, I, I remember correctly, you can write uh, using uh, uh, CSS, uh, XPath, and uh, Another one which I don't remember, syntax for, for checking the, the DOM I, structure. I assume that it, it, it's sort of similar to, to Selenium. Yes, can yes, exactly. Start. Absolutely, absolutely. I found it very, very similar in that. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so the web guy is, is available there. So if you want to check it, if you want to extend it, uh, you really can do this. And I found it better than trying to get into um, some old libraries which you don't know where they are, the files, etc. Et it looks like a high level or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so then you have all the sets file, uh, internal function, bootstrap, configuration, console, and some E yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> same goes for the functional <laughs> unit as well. Yeah, post that one. In, uh, in, uh, in the unit, uh, uh, in the unit, Directory. Uh, sorry, just, uh, sorry to interrupt. Just Please. Uh, in, in terms of um, version two, which I this is version two. Um, is it uh, already integrated with with um, <laughs> sort of composer <laughs> structure and the autoloader that sort of thing, or is it still going to have to jump through hoops to, to work with it? No, 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 no. As I said before, E two works out of the box. The only thing you have to configure <laughs> is uh, the URL of your application. Mm -hmm. Clearly for functional test acceptance, acceptance test, but after that, it's just done. Okay. It's really, really that, like that. And I found it probably <coughs> the best thing ever to do, especially no, because no. Code conception works nicely, and the integration works out of the box, and it's got all these kind of nicey, nice things available. Within the unit folder, anyway, I was saying that you got to the fixture um, folder, you got the models you are testing, and anything else you want to do. Uh, there are templates, but that's, yeah. So that's it, I wanted to show you the pages. Um, uh, login page. So this extends the base page, provides some very basic stuff, that is uh, the route through which I can access this page as an object. And a public function, in this case, for the login page, you can imagine that you, I want to log in. So I'm abstracting it, so every time uh, I need to do an administrative or an action that is requiring me to be logged in, I just can call login, it will do all the steps, it will be done through the guy. So I'm and then in the charge of the session exactly. um, with the other tasks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's a way of the best way to abstract and reuse code in a very simple and elegant way, in my opinion. 
very legible as well. Um, was there anything else here? Uh, yes, yeah, so let's see a, a test just, just to. <laughs> Um, functional. Have you got any preference? Uh, okay, login. Look, uh, login. So here it is. So this is the login. It, it is similar to the one I did before, but you, here you can see that I'm uh, instantiating the login page, opening it, having the login page so I can call the method I defined within it, and then I'm uh, collecting uh, uh, groups uh, with a test, otherwise I would have done it with uh, different uh, methods if I was doing a, a set, uh, or the opposite way around, anyway, um, with, with, uh, with an object, etc. So we have uh, the first uh, assertion is I'm going to try to log in with empty credentials. So and the login with empty credential, and I'm trying to expect the C validation error, so this is just an assertion you can do. And then you see these are the uh, actual um, uh, methods that will break the test in case they fail. So I will see username cannot be blank, and then will see password cannot be blank, and then I'm trying to do a false login with wrong credentials. And then at the end, I will try to do the correct thing. So we are covering all the possible cases as a test should be done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. cool.